Hey, what's up, guys? Genshin Impact just announced brand new weapons coming into the game in version 4.1 on the weapon banner accompanying Neviet and Hu Tao. Because of this, I want to talk about these weapons, how good or bad they are, as some of them genuinely are pretty insane and others are quite disappointing, talking about if you should go for them and on which characters you would use them. And with that said, let's get started. All right, so as you guys can see, Genshin Impact officially released a blog post for the first part of the weapon banners, like the first part of 4.1, and they showed us four new weapons that are coming with this next banner. The first one is Neviet's weapon, two of eternal flow which looks pretty cool visually and gives you quite an insane amount of stats this weapon gives 88 percent crit damage as well as at refinement rank one 16 percent hp and then up to 42 percent charge attack damage if your hp is constantly increasing or decreasing in fact you'll gain 14 percent for four seconds when you either gain hp or lose hp and this will stack up to three times this is a weird mechanic that is very like fontaine because there's a lot of hp changing mechanics in fontaine a lot of characters that can manipulate their hp this might have something to do with the hydra archon we don't know yet and it very clearly will have something to to do with Neviet's kit, who should be able to manipulate his own HP, as was hinted in the official live stream. If that wasn't enough, when you have three stacks of this, you will also gain eight energy once every 12 seconds, which makes this a pretty superb stat stick if you can use all of the stats. Now, the problem is how many characters can make use of this weapon's effect, and we will cover that in a second. Although I do have to say that just in general, the fact that this gives you 88% crit damage, having the same stats as the Aqua Simulacra bow with a different effect, of course, already makes it a baseline pretty powerful weapon, especially if you can make use of its effect as obviously if not just the crit damage while it's still gonna be fine it's a lot of stats might not be as powerful as other catalysts that are also really good stat wise but have an effect that you can make use of and so with that said who can use this weapon well obviously Neviet will be able to it was very hinted in the trailer and also with just this weapon's effect that he will skill with HP as if not why would this weapon give you HP we know he's gonna use charge attack damage and that he very likely will manipulate his own HP or will synergize with characters that can because of that this will clearly be the weapon made for him and very probably his best in slot now I do want to mention that if you are pulling on the weapon manor there's a good chance you're getting the battle pass and if you are the sacrificial jade weapon which is a weapon that has insane stats i'll put it level 90 on screen now while it doesn't currently really have a user in game like there's no one that can really make use of all of these stats there's no one that wants crit hp and em it is very safe to assume that neviet will which means that this will probably be a great option for him because of how many stats this gives you like 36 percent crit rate 32 percent hp and 40 em and this is only at r1 with these stats doubling to 64 percent hp and 80 EM at refinement rank 5, which means that if this character, Neviet, can use all of these stats, then it will be a very similar option. Again, though, he's not out yet, so do keep that in mind. Don't take this as, like, factual yet, but it is worth considering the other options before you pull for a signature, although I will say that if you are planning on playing Neviet, this catalyst does look very powerful, as there are so many stats you're gaining. With that in mind, for other characters, who can really make use of it? Well, as I said, pretty much any catalyst character can at least appreciate the crit damage that you're gaining. 88% crit damage is a lot, so even if you can't make use of the other other stats while there will oftentimes or pretty much always be a better option because of other five stars or high refinement four stars that can give you more total stats the 88 percent crit damage will at least be useful and so as a baseline it will be viable for pretty much any damage dealing catalyst but in order for it to be efficient and really strong you want to make use of either the hp or the charge attack damage or both and in practice there are quite a few catalysts that can spam charge attacks example is wander who can either normal attack or charge attack and with a weapon like this you would be leaning more towards charge attacking even someone like an on-field di miko can weave in charge Jax, Hazo can as well, although most of his damage comes from his skill. Yenfei and Klee are characters that can use charge attacks, and Ningguang weaves some in in her rotations as well. With that in mind, this weapon clearly doesn't seem as versatile as some others when it regards to its effect. You need to make sure your HP is increasing or decreasing non-stop, and you want to be charge attacking, and then the other stats that you're gaining, HP and energy, while they are really useful if the character needs them, if they don't, they're mostly wasted. When you compare this to Aqua Simulacra, which just gives you a flat 20% damage against anything, that one will typically rank higher in most characters weapon rankings even if they're ones that don't need hp for this weapon in particular though i do have to say that it can be really good for charge attackers provided they can manipulate their hp while in practice there's not too many characters other than probably neviet that can do this i do have a high suspicion that fontaine characters will help you do this i really think the hydro archon farina will probably have hp changing mechanics which kind of lines up with my prediction that vermilion will be the best on every character jokingly but hopefully seriously please but if this is true this would then make this catalyst pretty Pretty good on a lot of characters as i said that want to be charge attacking if you can consistently have this 42 percent charge attack damage on top of the crit damage you're gaining then it can be really good for any of the charge attack characters we mentioned even if it's not going to necessarily be their best in slot it's still a ton of stats and if you are purely spamming charge attacks on some of these characters then it can be their best option but as i said the problem is that it's a very unique and like niche weapon that i personally think is mostly for neviet we're gonna have to see how farina kind of impacts this or how future fontaine characters can make this weapon work just keep in mind that for neviet if you can make use of all these stats 
stats, it'll probably be amazing. Although there are alternatives, like for example, the battle pass weapon. Whereas if not, it'll still be a decent option, just ranging from pretty strong, but there are better ones to insane, depending on how many stats of the effect you can reliably proc and use based on which character has this equipped. Moving on though, to talk about these new four stars, which is mostly what I wanted to make this video about. First of all, we have the attack on Titan sword, which is our first four star HP percent sword. Now, if we're up to me, the HP percent sword would have been a blacksmith weapon. I really wish there was a free to play HP scaling sword and not just a limited gacha one, but it's a gacha game. So whatever, I guess. And having an HP percent sword is a nice thing to finally get on a weapon that isn't the key. This is now going to be an insane stat stick, just a bunch of HP that you gain for free for sword characters that want this HP and that didn't really have any options outside of key. This is mostly going to be the case for Nilu, who can definitely make use of the 40% HP and other characters like, for example, Kirara, if you want to maximize her shield, Layla, especially if you want to maximize her shield strength, although you can still go an energy recharge weapon for her to help spam your burst, but HP is obviously nice for her as well. And lastly, can be useful on Kuki because of its effect, which I'll read out very shortly. But for the most part, just having HP is already a good start, although its effect is a pretty cool one that will give you a ton of elemental mastery if you are either healed or heal others. This effect called Sea Shanty, which is hilarious, will give you a stack lasting 30 seconds anytime you heal others or are healed. And then when you use your skill or burst, you will consume all of the symbols you have, gaining 40 elemental mastery and two energy for each. Now, keep in mind this at refinement rank one. At refinement rank five, these stats will probably double to up to 80 elemental mastery and four energy per symbol. This adds up to up to 120 EM at R1 and 240 at R5. This buff will last for 10 seconds with a 15 second cooldown. And so while there is a bit of downtime here and you do need to set it up, there are two things you need to know about this sword. First of all, just the HP percent stat makes it already great and the best option on the characters that I mentioned, especially Nilu, just because yeah, you can go like an EM weapon or a supportive weapon that can help buff your team. But in general, you really want HP on Nilu. So this can make it her best four star option. The second part of the sword, however, is the EM that you're gaining and also energy, but mostly EM that can be really nice for someone like Kuki if you can make use of all of the stats you're gaining. Regarding Kuki, keep in mind that she's a character whose healing will scale on HP primarily and also some EM and will primarily want elemental mastery in her meta teams to proc hyper bloom. Because of that, this weapon can be good for a comfy playstyle if you need more healing. But if you are trying to maximize your elemental mastery, typically going for even a craftable like Iron Sting or other weapons like Xyphos Moonlight or Freedom Sworn will give you more elemental mastery. With that said, you can get up to 120 elemental mastery at refinement rank one and 240 at refinement rank five, which can mean that it's a lot of EM on top of the comfy HP percent stat. The main difficulty here is making sure you proc the effect efficiently for your first rotation. That means using your skill to heal and then using your burst once you have three symbols to gain the EM and also understanding that you only have 10 seconds of time out of 15 seconds. While I recommend this as an HP option for HP scaling characters for Kuki, who mostly wants EM, it can be good, especially with the refinements where the EM you're gaining is very high. It can be a comfy option, but generally just going for an EM stat stick would be a more consistent and easy option. Whereas the new Dockhands assistant can be a comfy option for healing and still a viable one, especially with the refinements that I wanted to mention, even if it's not my personal favorite for her. In my opinion, this is a sword that is mostly made for HP scaling characters like Nilu, like Kirara, or even Layla, where you won't need refinements and where you can get a lot of value out of it. Overall, I'm pretty happy to get a four star HP sword. Just keep in mind that it's gotcha. So if you already have better options or similar ones, you might not need to get it. But if you get it, it can be useful on a lot of the characters that I mentioned. Moving on, we have the portable power saw and HP scaling Claymore, which is an HP scaling Claymore. This means that not that many characters can use it. Contrary to an HP sword, which we don't have and we really have been wanting, especially for someone like Nilu, Kirara, Layla, whatever, right? An HP Claymore is not really as important. Now, before I move on, I did just remember that I saw people asking about this sword for Bennett. Please don't use this on Bennett. Base attack is more important than anything else on Bennett, with some exceptions, like sometimes you can use Fav or Freedom Sworn on him, but typically high base attack on Bennett means more attack you're buffing your team with through his burst. And then the second most important stat on him is energy recharge and not HP, even though HP does buff his healing. So not recommended for Bennett. But for this Claymore, which we are talking about now, there are already other HP Claymores that see little to no use. Think of like the bell, but this weapon is a bit different. It gives you some elemental mastery on its effect when you're either healed or heal others. But with that in mind, it's still kind of whatever. If we were to look at Claymore characters that can use this, most of these characters do not scale on HP. Like none of the characters I'm clicking on would really make use of this effect. You could argue that Sayu could use the EM and like sure, but in general, this is like a Dory weapon where she can use the HP and the EM. So if you want to play Dory, then okay. But even Dory needs like a ton of energy recharge. So I would still go like Fav or Sack, generally speaking. Dea could use it. Obviously she scales with HP and attack and EM if you're burgeoning and ER and Dea. So she kind of has a lot of like a split scaling and her kit works in so many different ways that you can't technically use so
so much on her. This weapon is no different. If you want the HP and you can make use of the EM, like if you're proccing Burgeon and want to maximize your field damage, then this can obviously be a fine option for her, especially if you're not relying on her burst and don't need energy. So it can be good for her, but outside of that, like even Cave who can use EM wouldn't really want this weapon. And then that's pretty much it in terms of who can use this relatively niche Claymore. Now, moving on, we have the last weapon, Ballad of the Boundless Blue, and this one is going to be an event weapon. This weapon will give you 565 base attack, which is a high base attack for a four star weapon, as well as 30% energy recharge, and then an effect that will increase your normal and charge attack damage when you hit an opponent with them. This can stack up to three times, and since it's an event weapon, it is safe to assume that everyone can get this refinement rank five for free, so we'll be doubling the stats here, as that's typically how R5s work, meaning that although while at R1 you would gain 24% normal attack damage and 18% charge attack damage, at R5, if this effect scales up how we assume that it will, you will gain up to 48% normal attack damage and 36% charge attack damage, which is honestly a lot. The main weird part of this catalyst is the ER stat, which I assume is going to be needed on a character like Neviette and probably Risley. This looks like a good free-to-play catalyst with those characters in mind, so probably going to be their free-to-play option for both Neviette and Risley if you're planning on getting them and don't want to spend a lot on a weapon, then this is probably going to be just a great free-to-play option. And honestly, I am really impressed at the amount of stats you're gaining for a on-field DPS character if you can make use of the ER, as the stats are just insane, damage percent, energy recharge, and also a very high base attack. This weapon is one that is comparable to, for example, a Dodoko Tails, which is another event weapon with a similar effect, giving you less charge attack damage, only 32%, and no normal attack damage, but way more attack percent and no energy recharge. Now, the problem with this weapon, though, for the characters that are in-game right now, aside from Neviette and Risley, of course, is that a lot of these on-field main DPS catalysts have one of two problems with this weapon. Either one, they don't need that much energy recharge from on-fielding in an optimal team. For example, Yenfei, while she can use ER, one, doesn't really rely on her burst, and two, can oftentimes just get enough energy from someone like Bennett and just being on-field, generating particles, and not needing the 30% ER that you're gaining here. The same can be said with quite a few other main DPSs. Number two is that a lot of these characters also might not even rely on normal or charge attacks to do most of their damage. For example, Hazo or Yai Miko, while they can normal and charge attack, the main part of their damage will come from, for Hazo, for example, his elemental skill, and for Yai Miko, also her skill and her burst. Because of this, while this weapon does give you a lot of very useful stats, unless you can make use of all of them, there will typically be a better catalyst option. Now, with that in mind, for someone like Wander and similar DPSs, energy recharge is not as valuable as crit rate, crit damage, or attack percent, as going for more damage over being able to burst every time it's up is more optimal for these characters. With that said, ER can still be useful. For Wander in particular, his second constellation is one where going energy recharge becomes much more viable as his burst deals way more damage. And for the other characters, it can help alleviate your small ER needs and make it to where you need literally zero on your substats. And it can just be kind of comfy to be able to spam your burst. With that in mind, when we look at specific examples, Yenfei and Klee typically will just get their burst back naturally. Ningguang will be ran with other Geo characters that will help her out. And we already mentioned Wander. And these are pretty much the characters that will rely on normal and charge attacks for a big part of their damage. Because of this, I do still think that if you can make use of some of the ER, which these characters typically can, unless you already have enough on your substats, which you might by now, then for the most part, it is a good stat stick. But if you don't need the ER, while it's still fine, you have a lot of base attack and a lot of normal and charge attack damage, there will still be better options as your ER stat is wasted. When we compare this to a free to play weapon like Mappa Mare, at R5, you'll get the same base attack and 32% elemental damage bonus on top of EM on the stat. While the EM stat is wasted on a lot of characters, and even with that, it's still quite good, this 32% elemental damage bonus would be better on those characters that can't fully make use of this, like for example, Yai Miko, who can use the EM and wants the elemental damage bonus quite a bit more than she wants just normal or charge attack damage. Overall, I have mixed feelings about this event weapon. I think it's pretty good in terms of the high amount of raw stats you're gaining, probably having the future Callus characters we're getting in mind, so you might want to use it on them, we'll see. But for the characters we have right now, it's oftentimes a viable option. Just keep in mind that the energy recharge is a stat that you may not necessarily need on a lot of the main DPS catalysts. For the other weapons, portable saw is not ideal, but this HP sword is a nice thing that we're finally getting. I wish it was a blacksmith weapon, but it is what it is. Finally, a bunch of HP being great for certain characters. And then Tome of Eternal Flow is one that I think will synergize exceptionally well with Neviet and probably with future Fontaine characters like maybe the Archon, who I think may let other characters than Neviet use this weapon and make use of its effect. But in general, it is pretty niche effect wise. Although I do want to at least point out that, yeah, you can let your HP change on whichever on field character you're using. You can just tank hits if you want and let yourself get healed, whatever. But in general, I think this is a weapon that will synergize with future characters. And overall, I'm pretty pleased with this, but I don't think you need to pull on this weapon manner because most of these weapons are replaceable and have other good options. Finally, though, getting a four star HP sword does feel quite nice. And the event weapon that we're getting is pretty cool. A great free to play option. That's a good baseline for
fine for a lot of these characters if you don't have a better option and can make use of its stats. For more detailed calculations, stay tuned for the specific character guides where I will be including a weapon ranking of all of like the new characters and how good each weapon is on them. And for now, thank you so much for watching. Do let me know if you guys want to see different types of weapon review videos, like maybe the battle pass weapons or the new blacksmith ones. I hope I sounded fine in this video as I am quite sick right now, but I still wanted to get this video out. Hope it wasn't too long and I hope you enjoyed. If there's anything new I want to add, it will be in a pinned comment as these weapons are new, so I may have missed something. Thanks so much for watching. And as always, I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace. Who can use this relatively niche claymore? Okay, Dory. <laughs> All right. All right. Dude, how long is she? She doesn't shut up.